Oh, hey, y'all, hey, it has come to my attention that many of y'all are afraid of big four patterns and what lies within these envelopes. Hey, y'all, hey, there is no fear in sewing. Let's open one of these puppies up and show you what it is. Let's go. I'm Marcy, I'm the curly haired half of the Handmade Heralds and I need to make myself another concert gown. I'm going to be using Vogue 1893. You are correct, Sis is not a gown, but she will be after I have my way with her because I don't let the pattern, the fabric, or anything really tell me what to do. Well, sometimes I let Rob tell me what to do, but that's because I love him very, very, very much. Don't let anything intimidate you in sewing, especially not a sewing pattern. It's just paper. Just lots and lots of paper. I'm getting ahead of myself. The first thing that we should be looking at is the pattern envelope. And if you're buying your pattern in store, say at, you know, the Madame Joanne's or the Spotlight, the envelope outside is really what you're gonna go by. You've got a lot of information on this pattern envelope, which is good because you are not pulling out all that paper that I just pulled out at the Madame Joanne's. Mm -hmm. There's fabric suggestions, yardage, requirements, notions, and sewing techniques that you're going to use. For the bra top, we've got top stitching. You're gonna need to employ darts, a separating zipper. This little paragraph tells us what level of sewing we should be at in order to accomplish what's inside the envelope. Vogue lists this pattern as average, moins, facile. I think it's a little more difficult than that, especially if you are attempting the bra top. But if you look down to another option included in this envelope, the skirt, that's a lot simpler. So they're not really lying, but they are a little bit. If I'm walking into a store, a Target, a Banana Republic. I'm usually looking at a size six to eight. In sewing patterns, I'm anywhere from a size 12 to 16. Most of the big pattern companies, that's McCall's, Vogue, Simplicity, Butterick, have size ranges now, ranging from anywhere from a four up to a, I wanna say 22. I'm gonna fact check that because I think some companies have expanded even further, and you're gonna be able to see on the outside of the envelope, if you take up this little flap, your sizes. Every envelope comes in a range. This envelope comes in a range six to 14, though on the back of the envelope, you can see they're giving you sizes six all the way up to the 22. That's so you can just look at the back of the envelope and decide which range you wanna pick. If I look at this envelope, hmm, I'm right at about a 14 to a 16. I fall within these digits. That puts me outside the parameter of the pattern range from six to 14. That means I might have to buy two envelopes. Mm -mm, that's not what it means. You know what? I am unconcerned. I am unbothered. Cause here's a pro tip. If you are outside the size range of the largest size in the envelope by about mm, two to four inches, you're still good to go because of a little something called pattern ease. And we'll get into that when I pull all that paper back out. The first page is my favorite. I'm the kind of person who arrives at a hotel and like the first thing I do is open up all the drawers and find a little city manual or hotel guidebook, exits, pools. I love a good manual. And so this first page of the pattern for me, I'm like a kid in a candy store. This is the choose your own adventure section right here. Look at this envelope. These views are gorgeous, but you can't really see the style lines so much on this envelope. Here, you've got your style lines. That's gonna help you visualize what you wanna do with this pattern. I've even been known to color in these little line drawings to better visualize what I wanna do with my sewing life. Next up, you've got your pattern pieces. That's these views blown out matrix style into what goes into making the view. I'm making view 
A. And right down here, we've got this handy chart that tells me every single pattern piece I'm going to need for view A. I don't need all 16 pieces of this pattern. I only need these pieces. And on top of that, I'm going to be making her strapless, so I don't need number seven, shoulder strap. I like to put a check mark next to each piece that I need because you'll see once we pull out that tissue paper, there's a lot of pattern pieces on there. You don't want to be tracing or cutting pieces that you don't need. I check which ones I need and then I put another little check mark through them once I've gotten them. I'm a little OCD about it. Don't at me in the comments, okay? I am actually a little bit OCD about it. In these next two paints, we're going to get into some shading. Mm -hmm. It is very important to look at the key for shading and remember it as we're going through our instructions, okay? Because all of these instructions are going to follow the shading key. And that's right here. You've got your right side of pattern, which is light. Your wrong side of pattern is dotted. Your right side of fabric is dark. And your wrong side of fabric is light. That really is going to help you visualize as we go along how you're putting the pieces together. Right sides together, wrong sides together. You can always just refer back to that little key. You might even just like, I don't know, take a picture of it on your phone and just put it over to the side so you can always just flip back to it. You don't want to turn pages if, if you're just that lazy. I mean, I've been known to be just that lazy. Now, I've skipped this little section because it's shady in a different sense of the word. These are your body measurements and these are your finished garment measurements, but they're actually not, okay? All I've got right here is the width of each leg and the width from lower edge and the back length from waist. Um, I'm making the top portion. These help me zero. Why all pattern companies don't put the finished garment measurements on the outside of the envelope where everybody can see them is beyond me. It would be very helpful. Anybody listening? Is this thing on? If you guys could do that in the future, just throw them on the outside for us, okay? Don't make us open up all this paper at the Madame Joanne's, get kicked out of the stove. Like I said before, I'm between a size 14 and 16 if I go by the measurements on the outside of the envelope. Mm. But those measurements do not account for ease, and it's the ease that's going to get you. Most people think it's the rhythm that's going to get you. Erroneous. It's the ease. Your finished garment is not going to measure your exact digits. If it did, you wouldn't be able to exist. This little fancy tie-dye job right here definitely doesn't measure my digits. This has a ton of ease. We've got a few of the pieces here that I'm going to need in order to make my bustier. And there's some interesting markings here, some hieroglyphs. Right here is what you're looking for. This little target is the bust point, okay? Basically right on your nipple. That's a little target. Right where your nipple hits. Mm -hmm. And next to these targets, wherever these targets appear on the pattern, they usually appear at bust and waist and hip. You're going to have measurements right next to it. And these are your finished garment measurements. So if I look right under this target, this is telling me that across my bust, a size 12 is going to measure 36 and a half inches. A size 14 is going to measure 38 and a half inches. That is, let's see, three inches above my actual bust measurement of 35 and a half. So let's go back over here to the envelope. Size 14 bust 36. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying? Size 14 bust 36, but when you finish the garment, it's going to measure 38 and a half. That's ease. You need ease for walking and breathing and eating and living and loving and dancing and just having a fabulous time. But in a bustier top, you don't need quite that much ease, right? You don't want your business falling out, okay? You need way less ease in a bustier top. So even though I'm a size 14 on the envelope, I'm actually going to cut a size 12 because one and a half inches 
of ease around my bust. That's all I need. I want my top to be fitted. It's a concert gown, gotta be fitted, okay? One and a half inches of ease will also give me some room to play with when I'm stitching if I want to let it out anywhere or take it in anywhere. Big four patterns are notorious for adding too much ease into their patterns. That's why you've got a little bit of wiggle room when you buy your pattern. That's a good little tidbit, isn't it? Isn't that a good little tidbit? Isn't it a good time to hit like and subscribe? Cause I got a lot of tidbits. All of these sizes, size six through 14 for this envelope are marked with their own special little line. You gotta find your line and cut along that line. If it gets a little intense, like up here, try to get it right, but uh, don't stress about it too much, okay? Just take your time when you're cutting out the tissue and sort of really think about where that line is going. You can even highlight it in a different color pen before you cut it out or trace it so that you're sure you're getting it right. As for cutting or tracing, I go both ways. If I'm getting a bunch of patterns at the Madame Joann's for a $1.99 sale, I'm probably cutting out that pattern. But if I'm getting a Vogue pattern, which only go on sale for mm, five bucks, $5.99 maybe a pattern here at the Madame Joann's, I'm probably tracing it. I like some Pellin easy pattern and I'll put a link to that below. Now what the hell are all these little marks all over the place? Those are your breadcrumbs. These little breadcrumbs, they are your friends. They want to help you. Do not leave your friends by the side of the road when you're tracing or marking your patterns. Put those friends on the road with you on your sewing journey. These are notches. Notches are wonderful. The very first pattern that I ever sewed, I skipped all of them notches and I skipped all of them dots and I didn't even pay attention to the grain line. I came out with something wearable, but only because it was fabric and I could put it on my body. Could I walk around in it? Could I sit comfortably in it? Could I exist? No, no, I couldn't. I was still proud of it though. I was still very proud of it. You gotta pay attention to your pattern markings. These will help you match up areas. Okay. Here we've got our bra front. If we look on the pattern right here, this is this little section of the bra, okay? The lower two cups. And if you look at these notches, you see how those correspond? Those notch points are going to match up when you're sewing and make your life so much easier than if you skipped them. The notches want to help you, okay? Always mark your breadcrumbs when you're finished cutting out your pieces. For notches, I like to snip just into that little notch right there, that little triangle, right into the fabric. You have no fear of actually snipping too far into the seam allowance because Vogue patterns and most big four patterns come with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you can see when you snip into that little notch, you're not actually gonna hit the seam line of your bustier top and be in danger of just seams busting open. That would be a very bad seam to have bust open. For these dots, large dots, small dots, I like to take a pen. Frixian pens are wonderful. They are heat erasable. You simply pierce the dot. I like to give it a little swing and your mark will go through to your pattern piece. Now, if you're working with something like this, which is a lot of markings, I like to actually use a ballpoint pen. I know, the horror. But these little dots are actually gonna be on the inside of your garment. No one's ever going to see them. And those marks are going to help you, okay? Now let's talk about grain line for a second. The last little breadcrumb that I wanna show you on these pattern pieces. This arrow right here, that's your grain line. Grain line is very, very important. Don't do what I did on my very first sew and just throw your fabric willy-nilly on the bed and throw your pattern on top however you want and just get to cutting because um, that dress did not survive in life. What you wanna do is place your grain line 
along the selvage edge of your fabric. What's the selvage edge? Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you asked because I just happen to have some gorgeous fabric right here. This is the long edge of your fabric and when you go into your, your fabric store, this is how it comes off of the bolt and how they cut your fabric into whatever yardage you would like. Your grain line, this arrow follows the selvage, okay? If the arrow was going this way, the piece would exist as such. The arrow's going this way, so the piece will be placed along the selvage edge. And you're gonna take your ruler and actually measure and be sure that the arrow is existing right along that grain line. Very straight and very perfect, okay? That is a very important breadcrumb. Don't skip any of them breadcrumbs, but definitely don't skip that grain line. Once you get your pattern all cut out, you've got several pages of instructions to guide you through the sew. There's a little glossary right in the beginning explaining any sewing technique you might use in the construction of your garment. Of course, these little definitions are a little sparse, but luckily you've got your favorite YouTuber who will explain those in depth for you. Each pattern piece is numbered and each step of the instructions will correspond with these numbered pattern pieces. If you see a one on here, it means you're working with piece number one. Again, all of the shading here follows the little glossary we saw on page one of the instructions. And as you can see, it's very visual. You can really visualize the steps of your sewing pattern and sort of see how all of these pieces are going to come together to make the bra top. There is the section of the bra. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's just, I, it's just, it's like science and math and magic combined. It's just all about following the steps now. That's all it is. If I look at my numbers and my pages here, this little top is gonna take me one, two, 29 steps to complete. That is 29 steps of fun. And you know what? It's actually gonna take me more than 29 steps because I've learned in my sewing journey the extra little things that I can do to really make my garments into what I want them to be for myself. For example, I'm going to be extending this pattern to waist length so I can get the gown that I'm aiming for. And I'm also going to be adding boning into this top because I don't think I want the shoulder straps that may change, that may change as I sew. It's a choose your own adventure in many ways. I don't let the pattern tell me what to do. I follow the pattern, I follow the rules, but I learned the rules so that I can break them. Breaking rules is fun. Now, just because I'm going on my own merry way and making this into a gown, that doesn't mean you need to hack up a pattern. You could follow this pattern as drafted and have a wonderful time. You don't have to add boning into your top. You don't have to make a bustier into a gown. And the more you sew up a pattern as drafted, the more you're going to learn what you like, what you could add to make it even better. And you're gonna be surprised at how quickly you're gonna start to see everyday garments walking around you, blown out in matrix style you're gonna start to see the pattern pieces that make up the garments on the people around you. Just don't stare at their boobs or their, you know, reproductive areas too hard because people get weirded out when you do that. If you decide to jump into a pattern like this for your very first sew, I'm not gonna stop you, go for it. But here's my advice, trust the diagrams. Look through the instructions, read through them before you jump into it. Make sure you are keeping track of which pattern piece is which because this little top has a lot of pieces in it and they all sort of look a little bit similar when you get to the to the boobage right here. Now maybe you're saying, Marcy, <laughs> that all sounds great, but I would like to jump into something a little simpler for my first sew. I got you, I got you. Hold on a second, let me find my envelopes. I got you. All right, here we go. These are some simpler patterns, okay? Some of them you can tell are simpler because it says it right on the front, very 
easy. Some of these options may look difficult, but if we flip over to the back and look at these line drawings, we'll see there's an option here, D, on this simplicity pattern that is merely an upper back and a lower back and a little collar. You see that? Little buttonholes for you. Over here, hmm, how about this simple little top, huh? That's one, two, three pattern pieces, looks like to me. This little wrap dress looks a little complicated on the front. Honestly, that right here, this view tells me it's pretty simple. And this pattern, mm -hmm, this very easy Vogue, my favorite Vogue pattern, which has since been reprinted and renumbered. The new number of it is right here. I actually show you how to sew this little number from start to finish in an open robe, duster, elegant layering piece. I don't really know what to call it. I just know I got like six of them in my closet and you can see that video right here. Okay, y'all, I hope this demystifies the sewing envelope for you. I hope it gets you into trying some of the big four pattern company offerings. There are some great, great styles out there and they shouldn't intimidate you. Don't let them intimidate you. If it intimidates you, you come running over here and you tell me and I will help you. Me and them notches, we will help you. All right, y'all, I gotta go make a concert gown because I gotta wear it in like seven days. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see what I make. <laughs> Cause really I have to sew it um, today. I will be showcasing that coming up probably next. No promises though. You know, I've learned don't promise what's coming next because who knows what's coming next. Life is coming next, right? Peace out everybody. Emphasis on peace. Go forth and sew. I gotta go find my pattern now. It's just all over the floor.